Today we're going to discuss control volumes. So let's start with our trusty Navier-Stokes equations written in this form. When we derived this equation, we uh, started with an integral form, but our region of integration moved with the fluid. It was a material region. Now we want to cast this equation in integral form, but for a fixed region of integration. So we're simply going to take the integral of our differential equation and integrate over a region which is fixed in space. So let's start by uh, casting our left-hand side, which is mass times acceleration, into this integral form. Now we can use a lot of the same rules we used in deriving the Navier-Stokes equations to sort of simplify or change the form uh, of this term here. So let's uh, just make those manipulations, which are essentially we're working in the opposite direction than we did before. So I'm going to add back in conservation of mass, which is essentially adding zero to our equations. convert this volume integral back into a surface integral using the divergence theorem. And now, since our region of integration is fixed, I can simply move the time derivative in or out of this integral at will to get the following two terms. So is the rate of change of momentum in the control volume. And the second term is the rate that momentum is carried in or out of the control volume. So the first term here seems relatively logical, right? If we take the integral of the velocity field times the density, we integrate it over the volume, that gives us the momentum. So if we take the rate of change of what's inside our box, that's the rate of the change of the momentum in our box. This term takes a little uh, getting used to and to be a little bit careful of sign. So let's just uh, take a kind of a simple example here where our control volume will be just a square. And on this square, the normal vector will point outward everywhere. And let's imagine we have some velocity field and we'll say that velocity field uh, we get momentum by simply multiplying by the mass density. And we'll just do this in 2D. So the x component is rho times u, and the y component is rho times v. So that's our momentum field, which is inside this box. So now let's look specifically at this term here. So we have rho times v, so the momentum, which is a vector quantity, times v dot n, which is the rate that that momentum is carried in or out of the control volume. On this boundary over here, the momentum is going to be a vector quantity, which has components rho times u and rho times v. That's our vector quantity of momentum. And then our v dot n term is, we have the x component of the velocity dotted with our normal vector. And since the way I've draw, drawn it, the velocity and the normal vector are aligned, that's just simply u. So that means the x component then on this boundary would be rho u squared, and the y component would be rho u times v. On this boundary over here, our momentum term, the rho v, is the same. But now our normal vector is minus 1, 0. So when we take v dot n, the velocity vector and the normal vector are not aligned. So we get minus u as the v dot n term. What that means is that the x component of the momentum on this boundary is minus rho u squared, and the y component is minus rho u v. So we can see then that if we were evaluating this term and the velocity field was sort of constant along this region, constant along this region, and it was the same on this side and that side, then when we integrated around the whole box, what was coming in on the left would exactly balance what was coming in on the right, and so the net change, in the, at least on those two surfaces, would be zero. Now, however, if the velocity field was changing, we could have more momentum coming on the left or the right, and the term would be positive or negative depending upon which one was greater. So now let's look at the right-hand side of the Navier-Stokes equation. So we have our three forces, the pressure, gravity, and viscous forces. Uh, this term seems pretty simple because it's just the, the density, the mass density times the gravity vector integrated over the volume. So this is the, the total force due to gravity. Uh, this term, the pressure term, we can convert to a surface integral using the divergence theorem, which gives us minus the pressure times the normal vector integrated over ds. We can see quickly if we draw a little control volume, which is a square, how the sign works for that term. So again, if we looked at just, say, the left and the right surface, this has the normal vector, which is 1, 0. 
this side has the normal vector, which is minus one zero. And so if we look at the sign of this, when we say minus the pressure times this normal vector, the two negatives will cancel, which tells us the pressure is pushing on this to the right. Here we have the negative sign here, the normal vector is positive, so any pressure on this side is pushing to the left. If those two pressures are equal, then they would cancel, so the net force due to the pressure in the x direction would be zero. If, however, the pressure were different on the left or the right, we could have a net force due to pressure pushing either this way or that way. Likewise, our viscous term, we can convert to a surface integral. So I could convert this to n dot our rate of strain tensor, which is the velocity gradient tensor, right, plus its transpose, integrated over the surface. Now this term is maybe a little bit more complicated, so we'll often not write it out in this term, but maybe we'll just think of it as simply we're taking an integral of some stress vest vector, which is the viscous stress, and we're integrating over a surface. So often what we'll do with the viscous stress is one, we, we sometimes might assume that it's simply zero. So, so we might assume that viscosity is a small player and we're just gonna simply ignore it. Or what we might do is we might want the total viscous force. So if we know all the other terms in the equation, the velocity field and the pressure, then we can actually calculate what the net viscous force is acting on an object. Uh, so often when we do the control volume approach, we will either make this assumption or, or we're trying to calculate this, or we have to do something else because inherently with the control volume, we don't actually know the velocity field unless we've assumed it. So let's look at what we have now as our final result. So we have that the momentum inside our fixed control volume can change with time if there's an imbalance in the flux of momentum coming in or out of the control volume, if there's a net force due to pressure acting on the control volume, there's a net force due to gravity acting on the control volume, or their net viscous stresses acting on the control volume. Uh, our momentum equation also has to be coupled with conservation of mass, which we could uh, write out in a similar form. I'll just write the final result, which is similar to what we've seen before, which is the mass inside the control volume can change with time. if there's a net flux of matter coming in and out of our box. So this is our integral form of our control volume analysis for a fixed control volume. We should note that this uh, expression here is good for the fluid. So one thing we have to be a little bit careful of is imagine we had, we're looking at flow over a solid object and we drew a control volume as such with the fluid, so we draw a box which is relatively large compared to the sphere. And then we have to, since our statement is good for the fluid, we have to sort of cut the sphere out. Now we could evaluate these terms. We could have flow coming in, we could have flow coming out. And if this thing, is ex this sphere here is exerting a net force on the fluid, we'd have to have some imbalance in the momentum coming in and out of this control volume. However, this control volume is maybe a little bit inconvenient to work with uh, because we're sort of stuck evaluating the terms here. Um, so very often what we'll do is rather than sort of cutting out the object, we'll just leave the object as part of our control volume. So now I'll include the object in the control volume. Our statement here is all still true. Nothing has really changed. Uh, since we've put the object in, we don't actually have to worry about sort of evaluating this term on this boundary. However, we do have to sort of say that this object couldn't be in equilibrium unless I stick my hand inside the control volume and kind of hold that in place. So here we might have to put some external force acting on the object. Now, of course, these two are equivalent because the external force here is nothing more than sort of integrating our viscous stresses in our pressure all around the object, but it's maybe a little bit simpler or clearer in our minds that the thing we're interested in is that external force. And so therefore, we're just gonna evaluate our control volume terms around the edge, so these four boundaries here. So in that form, we just simply have to add this external force to this side of the equation. So if we're gonna consider an external force, our control volume form would just be the following. So there we have it, conservation of momentum and control volume form.
Now this seems uh, rather long and maybe a little bit crazy, but we'll show some examples where lots of these terms we can either ignore or are simply zero, and it leads us to some simple insight. It's important to realize the control volume. We're not actually solving for the details of the velocity field. We're just looking at what's happening on the boundary, what's coming in and out of the control volume, and saying that what's coming in and out of the control volume, all that has to balance. So we can think of this as a macroscopic balance. We can't use the control volume form to solve for a detailed velocity field. However, if we make some assumptions, it leads to some great simplifications that's much easier in many cases than dealing with trying to solve the velocity field and can give us some simple insight into some simple problems.